Welcome to the Python Intro Unit Lesson 3. This program is going to be very similar to Lesson 2, but we're going to add more buttons. So it's going to give you some more experience and practice and just writing some Python code and understanding what everything does. So first you're going to open your document and you see a link here that will start you off with a template and that looks like this. If you run it, and I suggest that you run it, you will see an error. That's because we've got some things in here that we haven't added to our code yet. So let's get started. First, we're going to put our name in the programmer section. So type your name and today's date. And this is the thank you program. I'm just going to add that in here. Otherwise, it looks a little weird. Now, the first thing that we have to add is we have to import our GUI module. That was already done for you in lesson two, but this time you're going to have to do it yourself. You're going to use the word import, and notice that it turns a different color. It's kind of a purple color, and that lets the computer know or it's kind of indicating that this is a keyword. So I can't use it for a variable name or anything else, a function name, because it's already got its own definition to the computer. So import is a, is a special word, and it's going to import a module. And we're going to import simple GUI. So it's just spelled like that, simple GUI. And now when I run the program, I shouldn't get this, this error anymore because we are importing simple GUI. Okay. Now, sure enough, I get a different error, and that's okay. We don't have this function yet, so we're going to be creating that in just a minute. We're going to use a couple of global variables like we did last time. One of them is going to be message, and we're going to start this message off with just click a button. Now, whenever I do a, a string like this, just like we did in App Lab, I need to put my information in quotation marks. So when it's words, it's going to go in quotation marks. Okay. And I'm also going to use a color variable, just like we did before. So just pick any of the colors that you would like. I like to pick light, bright colors that look good on a black background. But you can pick any color. You know where to go, hopefully from the documents, to find the different colors, if you can't remember what they are. Now we already have a function for the draw handler that started here. We're going to have to add a few things to it. Now we're going to create some more on event functions. That's what we would call them in App Lab. They're going to be actually handlers, event handlers for our buttons. So I'm going to make a section here, button event handlers. We're going to create several buttons and all of the functions for those buttons are going to come here in this section. So we're just going to kind of divide up our code. It'll help us find things later on as our code gets longer. Now what we're going to do when I click a button is say, the, say thank you in whatever language that I'm doing. So you can see that the first one here is going to be in English. And we already know how to say thank you in English. So that's what I'm going to code here. Um, I want my function names to be descriptive. And this is going to be in English. So I'm just going to do a def, which remember is short for define. And I'm going to use English. Now I'm going to type my uh, function names and my variables in all lowercase. I'm going to have to do an open and close parenthesis whenever I do a function, and I need to do a colon. Now, if I'm going to change some values of my variables, I just need to make them global. So I'm going to type the word global, and I can put them on the same line. Uh, the computer doesn't really care, so I can just do one line of global and put both variables there. That saves me a little bit of time and space. Now, I want my message to be thank you in English. So I'm just going to do, remember, quotation marks, thank you. If I want to change a color, like what color would I like this message to be? Maybe I want it to be yellow. So I can just type that. So I'm going to change the value of message and color in my function that is in English. Now let's run this program. And if I click the button, I should get thank you in English. That's great. This is the first iteration of our program, and we got it to work. But we want to do more. So one button that's just English is not all that exciting. Let's add a button for Spanish. I'm going to come down here, and notice this is the line of code that adds the button that says English. So what's in quotation marks is what goes on the button, and this is the function that it calls. So this is my on event. So notice that English and English, they match here. So if I want to do another button, I'm just going to kind of do it the shortcut way. I'm going to copy and paste. And the order that you put them here is the order that they will appear on the screen. So I want to do English first and then Spanish. But you can switch them up if you want to. So 
I typed it like this. This is going to appear on the button, and then here's going to be the name of the function. So I'm going to do lowercase because my function names are going to be lowercase. Now I need to create a function for this. It's going to be very similar to this function, so I could even just do a copy and paste here, back it up a little bit. There we go. Now in Python, indenting is everything. So you don't have to worry about semicolons and curly brackets and all those things you had to do in App Lab because all you have to do is indent, but I have to be consistent. If I go off by one, notice how this turns red and that would be a problem. If I go in too far, I'm going to get an error code. Let's try it. See, it stops right there. So the main thing to look for and be careful about is just your indenting. You want to keep it nice and consistent. Okay, so I've got English, English. Well, I know this one is supposed to be Spanish. So let's just make that little change and be careful with your spelling. You want to make sure everything matches. And then how do I say um, thank you in Spanish? So I'm just going to put gracias. And then I can change the color if I want to. So maybe I want it to be lime. Now I should have two working buttons. So I've got my English and I've got my Spanish. And I can go back and forth. How about three buttons? So you know how to add a button, and maybe you want to do um, German or French or Chinese or any language that you're learning. If you don't know another language, then you can Google it and see how do you spell, how do you say thank you in some other language. So the expectation now is you're going to add at least one more button with another language. You have time. Maybe you want to add three or four. How many buttons can you put in? You get to be as creative as you want to be. So I'm going to pause the video right now and I'm going to finish up mine. I'll let you finish up yours and then we'll kind of come back and compare in a minute. So I got my program finished. I ended up doing four buttons. So I have my English, my Spanish, I did German, I did French. Okay, so I didn't change the color for German. I should go back and do that. But I basically have a nice working program with no errors and that's how yours should be. Now, if you haven't done so already, now is a good time to save. And you're going to get a URL, and you might get a new URL. Um, and now is a good time. You're going to copy this. You're going to come over to your lesson, to your document, and where it says to do your URL, you're going to paste it right there. And then you've got an active link. You can always come back to your code. You're going to do your exit ticket, and you're ready to turn this in.